which is talking about the people of God. And Amos, the Lord spoke to Amos and said, but they do not know how to do what is right, declares the Lord. Those who hoard, these who hoard up violence and devastation in their citadels. He's talking about the people of God. And he says, they don't know how to do what's right. Now the world, and all too often the church, has evolved. <laughs> more, like, more like devolved. So I use that judiciously. Give me a little grace here. The church has evolved to a state where people don't even know the difference between right and wrong. They don't know the difference between right and wrong. Good and evil. Or perhaps worse yet, what God spoke to the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah 5.20, and he said, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who substitute darkness for light and light for darkness, who substitute bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Okay? I want to tell you something. If this sounds judgmental, maybe it is. Maybe it's supposed to be. Maybe it is the judgment of God. That here in the United States and in many places that we have traveled throughout the Western world, sin is celebrated. Sin is celebrated mm -hmm. and righteousness is mocked. Yes. While the word of God is called hate speech. If that's not calling good evil and evil good, I don't know what is. You see, we're all born, all human beings are born with a stain of sin. It's, our, it's in our DNA. It comes from our way back father. I see all these commercials, you know, check out, you get, send in your DNA and find out your... I know my origins. <laughs> my origin. I come from Adam, who as a matter of fact was a sinner. And that stain of sin was carried on generation after generation, passed on generation after generation. Until you die. Until I die. A lot of people are afraid of death. Listen, I did it. It wasn't so bad. That's right. Because when you are born again of a father in heaven who has no sin to pass on, who only has righteousness to pass on, you have died to yourself. You're a new creation. The old things have passed away. That's what it takes. And we should be rejoicing in that. Hallelujah. See, but I want to tell you something about the natural man. And this, this should be obvious. I promise you it should be obvious to every father. It should be obvious to every mother. You don't have to teach a child how to be bad. You don't have to teach a child to do wrong. Yeah. You don't need to teach a child to lie. You don't need to teach a child to be selfish. It's in the DNA. Right. It's in the DNA. It comes naturally. It does. Exactly. It comes naturally. That's why it's in conflict with the spiritually. All right? That's right. But the Word of God says, train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Proverbs 22, 6. So children need to be trained in what is good. They need to be, they need to be trained what's right. Mm -hmm. They need to be trained in the way they should go. It doesn't happen by accident. And shame on parents who think, well, I'll send them off to the world to be trained. The world doesn't have it. You know that uh, we were talking about this the other day, and the Word of God, this is pertaining to everything. Peter says pertains to everything, life and godliness, That's everything right. pertaining life and to godliness. Him. So people, when they think about training up their child, they're thinking only the spiritual, but it's everything in life that you should be training them up in. It's in here, how to do that. It, it is. And, it's, and God has put it within his body here on earth. Right. I, I'm, I'm going to distract myself a little something here. Somebody, uh, somebody had sent me a video, sent us a, a video. I think I sent it on to you, by the way, of a fellow, uh, a, a black fellow, a Christian. I don't know him. I don't know what the set, setting was or anything. But when I turned on the video, he was talking about it. He's a musician and a singer. And he was talking about uh, how... Black Negro, the Negro spirituals started here in the United States from the slave trade and everything. And it was just utterly, utterly amazing because he said, and there's a term for this, a, a, a pentachords, or it came from watching somebody play on the piano only using the black keys. Huh. Now, this is not prejudice, right? Yeah. And to prove his point, he's standing there and he starts tinkling the black keys 
And the, the hymns are immediately recognizable. Wow. And one of the ones that was the most striking was Amazing Grace. And of course, if you know the story, Amazing Grace came from the heart of John Newton, who had been a slave trader, captain of a slave ship. So this fellow is going on and he starts talking about the, the, the sound of these tunes that come up. And he said, Newton must have heard these Negro songs, yeah. songs of sorrow, yeah. songs of pain coming up from the holds of those ships that he captained. Mm. captained. And, he start, and he started to sing Amazing Grace with that beat, with that tempo, with that, with that sorrow in, 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 in it. I tell you, it just grabbed my heart. It was mm. absolutely amazing. Don't let your children learn music from the world. No, 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 no. Because they will be missing what music was intended to be by God. Don't let your children learn what love is from the movies and songs that are coming out of the world, or they'll have believed a lie. You need to bring up your children in the ways they should go. And you know the way they should go? They should be following the way. Jesus, Jesus said, I am the way. Teach and train your children to follow Jesus. And there's one thing that I know, and that is teaching without Jesus. His life.